In this video, I'm going to talk about two different types of probability. We have experimental versus theoretical probability. When I think about theoretical probability, this is probably the one that you're most familiar with. Think about if I say, what's the probability for flipping heads on a normal two-sided coin? There's two possibilities, heads and tails. The probability of you choosing heads would be one out of two. Theoretical probability is based on the math. It's based on the outcomes that you actually can see that are on the coin, right? Now, technically, I have a theoretical probability of getting a flipping heads one out of two times. Theoretical probability is what is expected to happen based on the math. When I'm thinking about theoretical probability, I'm thinking about what's the total number of possibilities or possible outcomes in the situation, and then how many of those outcomes would give me the desired event. So if I'm finding the probability of heads, I know that there are two possible sides on a coin, heads and tails, and I know that there is just one head. So my theoretical probability is one half. Just like I can find the probability of heads, that's one half, I can also find the probability of tails, which in this case would be the exact same thing, right? Again, I still have two options. Favorable outcomes or tails would be one out of two possibilities. This would be theoretical probability. Here's where it gets tricky and where we start to distinguish the two. Experimental probability is when you actually start flipping the coin. So in theory, we should be able to get heads one out of every two flips, in theory. But you could have really bad luck, right? You could get tails over and over and over and over and over again. It could be a long time before you got heads, right? That would be where we get into experimental probability. Experimental probability is found by doing an experiment and observing the outcomes. We have a different equation for how we want to think about this. For experimental probability, we want to write our fraction as the number of times the event occurs out of the total number of trials. Let's go back to our flipped coin and look at this through the experimental probability lens. Let's say that I flip a normal two-sided coin 10 times in a row. Let's say that three of those times I get tails and seven times I get heads. If I'm thinking about what's the probability for getting, let's say, heads, I'm going to think about that I flipped the coin 10 times and I got it 7 out of 10 times. Now remember, this is what actually happened to me. This is not based on the math. Based on the math, I had my probability of 1 half, right? This is based on what actually happened. So the probability of heads out of 10 flips would be that I got seven. Remember, you need to simplify if necessary. I don't need to in this case. When I'm thinking about the probability of tails, in my case, I flipped it three times. So that would be three times out of 10 trials. Three tenths would be my experimental probability for flipping tails. Whenever I'm trying to remember the difference between the two, I like to think about what I hear in real life. So you'll hear people say, well, in theory, it should happen. That is based on the math, right? When they say in theory, they're not basing that on what's happened to them. They're saying that based on the math, this should happen, right? If I flip a coin twice, I should get heads. However, the experimental probability is what actually happens when I flip it. The denominator is based on the number of trials. So your experimental probability is going to look very different almost always than your theoretical probability. I hope this video was helpful and you now know the difference between experimental versus theoretical probability. In theory, you should.